Hey everybody, it's Luke Gordon, and lately I've been getting a lot of requests and questions from people who have vertigo, just wondering if they really have uh, BPPV, or what we consider like the classical vertigo. And if you don't know what that is, that's when you have the little crystals in your ear, and it's very treatable. And so they say, well, do I actually have this, or do I have something else? You know, is it a different issue? Um, and, and a lot of them have tried like the classic maneuvers to get rid of BPPV, like the Epley maneuver, uh, which I've got videos on that if you haven't seen that. And so I wanted to just take a moment to say, if you think you have BPPV, uh, or again, the little crystals, the little rocks that get loose in your inner ear, here's three really solid indicators that you probably do. So I'm gonna explain those three, and then I'm also gonna explain kind of the flip side of those three and say, if it if it doesn't look like that and it looks more like this, then you probably don't. So that's what we're gonna go through today. Um, if you don't mind, give my uh, video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel before you forget to, um, then we'll keep rolling with the content. So the, the first part, so again, BPPV, which is the acronym for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Don't try to spell it, um, but that's what it is. So the first key indicator that you have BPPV is kind of that funky word paroxysmal, which if you Google it, it says like sudden and intense uh, symptoms, often like violent to the point where it's like, it just happens out of nowhere. So that's a hallmark sign of that inner ear vertigo, the BPPV, is that at times people who have it will have like sudden onset and it just like really floors them. Sometimes literally, you know, it can knock them over if they're not careful. So um, certain activities or movements, and then they get this really sudden bout, like the room is spinning or turning that or the whole world is, or sometimes it's kind of the opposite where they feel like they're moving while the world is staying still. So that's the number one indicator. Or the first one that I want to mention out of three is that it's like a sudden intense came out of nowhere and just really, it was upsetting, you know? So that's the first one. If you've got that, that tends to be BPPV. And let's walk through the next ones. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The other P then in the acronym is positional. So what leads to that sudden onset of that severe like spinning uh, sensation? And typically it's a position change. So you have to remember that we're talking about the inner ear and you know, fluid filled canals, little crystal or rockets loose in there and floats through. And when you do certain motions that move your head, and it, re it relates to that specific canal, that's when you're gonna get the symptoms. So let's break that out then into the two most common ones. So the most common one, uh, the most common canal that's involved is what we call the posterior canal. And typically, when you work with clients with this type of uh, vertigo, they'll tell you when they tip their head forward and back, or if they bend forward to get something off the floor, that that causes the symptoms. Again, the sudden onset. Um, they could be sitting in a chair, tip their head back, I've had people almost like fall out of a chair. Uh, in the shower, you know, you tip your head back to scrub your hair, get long hair like I do, um, that causes it. The other really common one for those positional changes with the posterior canal is that when they get in and out of bed, they'll have a sudden wave like getting up to the side of the bed and they'll kind of, you know, go like this for a while. Um, one thing I forgot to mention with paroxysmal is usually it's sudden and intense for about 10 to 30 seconds. If you're going longer than 30 seconds in like a minute or two minutes, it could be something else. Um, so again, keep in mind those position changes, especially for the posterior canal. If you're looking at the horizontal canal, which is much less common, you're looking more at like turning your head side to side, or people will say when they roll over in bed, they'll get it. That's usually more the horizontal canal. Either way though, it fits into the mold so far. It's certain position changes and they're pretty, um, they're pretty reproducible or um, what's the word I'm looking for? You can anticipate it, like you can expect it. You keep doing it, it'll keep happening. So um, those are the first two that fit the mold for BPPV. And then um, the third one I wanted, to, I wanted to throw out there then is that oftentimes um, when I'm taking like a client history for this type of vertigo is that the client will have mentioned that I fell at some point or I bumped my head, something like that. So something that could actually kind of jar your head and then that could loosen up one of those little crystals from your inner ear, causing it to flow down to the, into the canal. So lots of incidences of this with older adults, they actually had a fall, things were going well. Let's say they broke their hip, hip is doing okay, surgery, rehab, but they still have this dizziness just with certain head movements. So they just avoid the head movements. You know, six months to a year later, we end up helping them out. Um, at one point I had a gentleman who was a racquetball player and this was four years prior, he had run into the wall playing racquetball and for four years he was just avoiding those position movements and head, and head movements until I finally convinced him to let me help him. Um, so that's the third one I, I wanted to throw out. You don't have to have had a fall or a bump to the head or anything like that, 
But if you did, it's just one more piece to the puzzle that might point you in the direction and say, yes, you have BPPV versus some of the other things that could cause vertigo. Um, so those are that's that's it for this video. I think the next step then is if you figure out you have it, you want to know how to treat it. I'm going to link some videos um, to this video talking more about how to treat uh, positional vertigo, uh, what you need to do to test it, treat it, specifically figure out what's causing it, which canal are you in, and then go from there. So um, that's it for this video. Please uh, again like, subscribe, leave me a comment with any questions or feedback, and I will do my best to help you out. And uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching.